2.2, more on functions and their graphs, the domain of f. So, th so this equation is of the function f, so what's the domain? Remember, domain are the possible x values. So since this goes off to the, uh, the left forever, that's the negative infinity over there, understood? So we could say the domain starts off with negative infinity, keeps going, keeps going, goes to zero, changes direction, goes down, goes up, and this right here indicates that it's going off to the right forever. So we know the domain has a positive infinity over there towards the right. Okay, the range. Now remember the range are all the possible y values. Okay, so we're going to look at the smallest y value, which looks like it's way down there, which looks like that's a negative one. So it looks like we're going to include the negative one. And it keeps going up, up, up forever, right? So it's also going up forever. So it looks like a positive infinity is up there. So we're going to include the positive infinity. Um, looks like the x-intercepts, x-intercepts, it looks like we have an intercept here and an intercept there, and we want to include those as ordered pairs, right? So this point over here is a 2, 0. Over here, it looks like what we have is a 4, 0. So it looks like the two points that we're interested in is 2, 0 and 4, 0. Okay, what about y-intercept? Oh, here we go, right there. That's where it intercepts. So that's going to be a 0, 8. So we include that as 0, oops, sorry, 0, 8. Intervals in which f is increasing. Okay, cool. Well, it looks like from this point right here, right here, right, which is a positive 3, and it just keeps going up, 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 up to infinity. Okay, cool. So all the way from 3, all the way to infinity towards the left, to the right, sorry, it looks like it's increasing. What about decreasing? Okay, well, all the way from this point right there, right, the 0, 8 point, the 0, 8 point, it is decreasing all the way until we hit way down here, which is at the 3, um, negative 1 point. Okay, so where is it decreasing? We, when, it, when we're asking what, when is it increasing, when is it decreasing, when is it constant, it's asking for the x values, right? So the x value of 0 all the way up to the x value of 3, it is decreasing. Then where is it constant? Well, all the way to the negative infinity over here, that's the x value, so negative infinity. It's constant all the way up to zero, the x value is zero. And again, we're always, we're including, these are x values that we're doing. Intervals are uh, x values in this case, right? They're not ordered pairs. I know they look the same, but they're different. Okay. The number at which f has a relative minimum. Okay, well, it looks like there's a, a relative minimum right there. And um, we would say the number at which it has a relative minimum is the three. Now, the relative minimum of f at a negative three Right, so when x is negative 3, um, we have a negative 3 right here. We look over here. The height at that point is an 8. The value of x for which f of x is equal to 3. Okay, so f of x is equal to 3, we're basically asking for the y value here. And then they ask for the x value, right? Okay, so when, when y is equal to 3, when y is equal to 3, which is right here, okay, they want to know the x value. Well, the x value looks like it's both going to be a positive 1, and it is going to be, let me write that down here more. Okay, so this goes here. So there, it's going to, blah, 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 blah. It's going to have an x of a 1, and it's going to be an x of a 5, right? So this point right here, that has 1, 3. And again, so when, when y is 3, x is 1. But also over here, we can also see that when x is 5, y is 3, right? So again, this thing right here is asking, well, what happens when y is 3? Well, when y is 3, x is either a 1 or a 5. 1 or a 5. No, my handwriting is terrible. If f is, uh, is f even, odd, or neither? Uh, it's going to be neither. Let's just verify that really quickly. Okay, well, all we have to do is just find a point here where it doesn't have something matching on the opposite end, right? So, for instance, um, let's say x is when x is 1, y is 3. That means when x is negative 1, y would also have to be positive 3, right? But it's not. So that, that's it. That, that already verified. See that point right there? There should there's, The graph should be there, and it's not. Okay, so it's not even. Uh, what about odd? Okay, so if I say, for instance, x is... 
uh, when we have a, we have the ordered pair of 1, 3 here, right? When x is equal to 1, y is equal to 3. That means if x is equal to negative 1, right, y would have to be equal to negative 3. And in fact, we go over here, right there, but there's no point there, right? So we know that it's not odd, therefore it has to be neither. It failed both the even and odd of the test. Okay. Evaluate the piecewise function at the given values of the independent variable. Okay, cool. So what we have to do here is first we have to we have to look at this is a this we have to use one piece or another piece of it. So when x is less than zero or when x is negative, we're going to use the first one right there. And if x is greater than or equal to zero, zero or greater, so if it's zero or positive, we're going to use the second equation. So the first example we have is a negative 4, which is negative, so we have to use the first part of that piecewise function. So we're simply going to put f of negative 4 is equal to 4 times negative 4 plus 3. 4 times negative 4 is going to be a negative 16 plus 3. Negative 16 plus 3 is negative 13. All right, what about f of 0? Well, zero is included in this one, the equal part right there, so we have to use the second one, okay? So we would be simply saying zero plus six. Well, zero plus six is just six. So there you go. How about the next one, two? Well, two is also going to use the second one because it's greater than zero or positive, so we're going to use the second equation. So we're going to simply say two plus six. Two plus six is eight. The domain of the piecewise function is negative infinity to infinity, and they give us a piecewise function. Uh, in this case, if it's if x is less than zero or negative, we're going to use the first one. And if x is greater than or equal to zero, we're going to use the second one. Okay, we want to graph the function. Okay, so we, we can do some tables here, right? So we say x and y. So at zero, we're going to use the second one. So let's put some negative ones here. I put negative two. So if you plug a negative two in there, so we would say negative two. Let me put this, uh, use, use correct notation. f of negative 2 is equal to 2 times negative 2, which gives you negative 4. Negative 4, right? It's because we use the first one, right? I'm at negative 2, so I have to use the first one because it's less than 0. Uh, let's try negative 1. We're just trying to fill in some points here. Okay, so f of negative 1 is equal to 2 times negative 1 is equal to negative 2. We put negative 2 here. Now we flip over to 0, or 0 is because of this equal part right there, we're going to be using the second part of the equation. So when f of 0, we would say negative 2 times 0 gives me a 0. Okay, well, 0 is 0. Okay, well, let's, let's fill in a couple of more extra points here. Some of you might be wondering, how am I picking these points? I'm just literally just trying to pick some points, a couple of points on each side of this piecewise function. That's it, right? So I picked a couple of points that were going to be on the first part of the piecewise function. I picked a couple of points that are going to be on the other one, the other side of the function, right? And that was it. That, that was my logic, right? Okay, so we say f of 1. So we say negative 2 times 1 equals negative 2. Negative 2. And then we say f of 2. Negative 2 times, oops, 2 negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, so we say negative 4. Okay, so let's let's fill in some of these, right? So I can rewrite these as ordered pairs, but it's not really necessary. So you, these are your ordered pairs, right? Okay, so negative 2, negative 4. So negative 2, negative 4 right here. We have one point right there. We use a different color. Hopefully that's a little more visual. Okay, so then we say negative 1, negative 2, so negative 1, negative 2 right there. And then we say 0, 0, 0, 0 is right here. And then we say 1, negative 2, 1, 1, negative 2. All right. And then what we say is we said 2, negative 4, 2, negative 4. And this just would have continued. We can kind of see what the pattern looks like here. My handwriting is terrible, but you get the point. And that just continues on forever, right? Okay, so graph the function. Use your graph to determine the function's range. Okay, we want to know the range. Well, the range is um, the y values, right? So we're looking at all the values that are up and all the values that are down. So the minimum value, well, given this keeps going down forever, looks like the minimum is going to be negative infinity. So we have negative infinity. 
And because it goes all the way up to this, the origin, which is at zero, it goes all the way up to zero and it's solid, it includes zero. Yes, so we are going to include the zero in the ring. 